Okay, this lesson concludes our study of conics. This is the end of our chapter 10-6, Translating Conic Sections. And we have done, been working on this all year, so hopefully this will be an easy lesson to uh, conclude with. So remember when H and K is in one of our parent functions that our graphs have been moved, excuse me, H units horizontally and K units vertically. And we have talked about if H or K is inside the parentheses, then you move in the opposite direction of what you think. And if H or K is outside the parentheses, then we're going to move in the same direction. Now, with our ellipsis and hyperbolas, which is what we're concentrating on today, um, our H and K is always going to be inside the parentheses. It's more the parabola that you might see it out in the different forms that you have. So here are our ellipses, and this is what we've talked about um, in 10-4 when we had the centered at the origin. Now we're centered at H and K. Remember, H is always with X because those two are the letters that we use for horizontal direction, and K is always with Y. So whatever order, it doesn't matter. K is always with Y, and H is always with X. This equation doesn't change. And um, if I go down and just briefly show you the hyperbolas, same kind of thing, centered at the origin, and then when we moved it, H and K. Um, asymptotes changed a little bit, but I'm going to talk about that when we do the examples. So here we go. What is the standard form of equation ellipse with vertices 2, comma 3, and 22, 3, and one focus at 6, 3, sketch the ellipse? So as I have been doing in this whole unit, the first thing I'm going to do Let's go plot this information. So I have 2, 3, which is about right here. And then I have 22, 3, which is about right here. And that is enough to tell me what the center of my ellipse is. Okay? So because my center has to happen halfway between here, so halfway between 2 and 22 is 12. And of course, it's going to be on that same horizon. So my center is going to be 12, 3. And once I have figured that out, I'm going to go ahead and write my equation. So Because there's so many different parts of the equation, it's easy to get mixed up if you do it all at the same time. So I'm going to write x minus 12 quantity squared over something plus y minus 3 quantity squared over something equals 1. So that's my general equation of ellipse, and I'm going to go fill those in as we go through. Um, and keep in mind, as I said, the center is at 12, 3, and this is the opposite of what it looks like. That looks like you would think it would be negative 12, but it's opposite. So that's in case you're not familiar with that and hadn't been with me all year long. I know what that is. Okay, so the next thing, this is a vertex, and this is a vertex, and this is the center of my circle. And I know a letter that corresponds to the distance between the vertex and the center is A. So from here, I can figure out from 2 to 12 that A is 10. And which variable am I going to put it underneath is the one that it's moving. So I'm moving in a left and right direction with that A. So I'm going to put it under the X. And of course, <coughs> excuse me, it's always A squared. So 10 squared is 100. Now, the other information that they give me is that the focus is at 6, 3. So I'm going to go to 6, 3, and here is a focus. And the letter that we have that denotes the distance between the center and the focus is C. And so that distance from 6 to 12 is 6. Now, why is that so important? Because I need this one, and this is B squared. This was A squared. That's B squared. So I'm going to have to use my equation, which is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. What is c squared? Well, that's 6 squared. a squared is 100, and I'm looking for b squared. So to solve that, you find out that b squared equals 64, which is the number that I need to write here. So I'm going to go ahead and write that, and I'm done. I've written the standard form equation of an ellipse, but I do need to know what b is because i got to be able to graph it. So b, of course, is plus or minus 8, and I'm going to go back to my center, and I'm going to go up 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 
is going to put me here. And 2, 4, 6, 8 is going to put me right there. And then I'm going to get my handy dandy elliptical tool. Let's see if I can graph this and make it look like an ellipse. And that didn't work. <laughs> so try that one more time. And right here. And we'll see if I can connect my dots. And there we go. So there's my ellipse. Okay. On to number two. What are the center, vertices, foci, and asymptotes of the hyperbola with this equation? So, from here, the first thing I have to give is the center, and the center is the opposite of what it looks like, so that's going to be 2, comma, negative 2. So, I'm going to go plot the center. 2, negative 2 is right here. This is the center. And now, in my x direction, I'm going to go left and right 6. So I think I'm by twos again. So two, four, six. And I'm putting a dot, two, four, six, because this is under the positive term. When I go under here, that's the negative term. Okay, that's going to be up and down eight. Two, four, six, eight. We put an X there. Two, four, six, eight, because I know I need it to draw my box, but it's not going to be part of my graph. So we're going to go draw our rectangular box and after we draw our rectangular box we are going to um, connect the diagonals where I go all the way to here this one goes here and here and then I'm gonna um, draw the diagonals of my box and I start here and I'm gonna expand it as you see and because I found that makes me uh, be a little more accurate in my drawing and then I don't have to go which way do I go I go to the one with the dots not the one with the X marks and basically we're just going to draw it approaching our asymptotes so as you've noticed the direction said go find all this information and then sketch it but you'll see I find it easier to sketch it now I'm going to go answer the information so my vertices Okay, my vertices are those dots. Those are the turning points in my branches. So this is negative 4, 2. And this is 8, 2. Okay, my foci, I have to do some math to figure that out, so I'm going to come back to that. And my asymptotes, okay, I showed you that different equation that we have. But more importantly, we before we had y equals plus or minus a slope times x um, and instead that was when our center was at zero zero so my center is not at zero zero but I get to just take this top part without it so it's going to be y plus 2 equals plus or minus whatever my slope is times x minus 2 I'm going to go find that slope in just a second but I'm pointing out if you don't have this then it was just y so it's whatever you have up here without the squared if it said y squared, you'd have y. If it said x squared, you would have just x. If it says x minus 2 squared, I'm going to have x minus 2. Now I have to go find my slope. Again, I'm not getting bogged down. Is it a over b, b over a? You can look at that, but you got two other choices. One is you can go back to your drawing, and if you're finding the equation of this, I have a point, and my slope is from the center. It's up 8 and over 6. So my slope is plus or minus 8 over 6, which, of course, is going to reduce to 4 over 3. But the other thing I've been pointing out is slope is rise over run, and the rise is underneath the y. So the square root of that number is on top, the square root of this number is on bottom. Okay, so last but not least, let's go do our foci. So we're going to go find our foci and how do we find that that is c and c squared equals a squared plus b squared so i'm looking for c squared there's my a squared there's my b squared so c squared equals 100 and c equals plus or minus 10. So if you plot those, it will help you get the right answer also and make sure you know how to label that point because it gets a little tricky about which number changes. But from my center, my focus is always inside the curve. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 is going to put that focus 
inside the curve. And then I just have to go give the coordinates of that point. And this is negative 8, 2. And the last one is 12, 2. And there we have it. Hey, pause one second, please. Okay. The next problem we have says which type of conic section has this equation and what is its center? So we've talked a lot about this at this point in your life. Okay, it'll change a little bit when you get to pre-cal. But in algebra two, when you look at this, how do you know what conic section it is? Well, I have both variables squared. And if both are squared, I have a circle, ellipse, or hyperbola. If they're both plus, the x squared is positive, the y squared is positive, then that means it's either a circle or an ellipse. And the fact that the coefficients of both of them are the same means my A and my B will be equal, and therefore I have a circle. Okay? So, just something to help you keep that in mind when you're looking at it. Okay, so how am I going to start? Um, we just identified that it was a circle, so we'll put that down. And now I need to be able to graph it, and so in order to graph it, I'm going to have to complete the square with that. So... That's going to be x squared plus, I'm going to, uh, excuse me, gather my um, variables together. So x squared minus 12x plus blank plus y squared minus plus 4y plus blank equals 8 plus blank plus blank. And so, what do we put in here? Half of 12 is 6, and then I square it. And I multiply it out over there. Half of 4 is 2. And I square it. And I multiply it out over here. So now when I simplify that, okay, these three terms are going to factor to x minus 6 quantity squared. Plus, these three terms are going to factor to y plus 2 quantity squared. And then, of course, I combine my terms and I get 48. So from there, that means that I have a center of the opposite of what it looks like, 6, negative 2, which is what they asked. So that's the answer to that. And now I have to sketch the graph. So I'm going to go plot 6, negative 2. 2, 4, 6, negative 2 is right here. And my radius is, of course, the square root of 48. And to plot it, we're going to go estimate, go use a calculator and find out that's about 6.9. So I'm going to go uh, almost 7. So 2, 4, 6, 7. 2, 4, 6, wait, 2, 4, 6, 7. 2, 4, 6, 7. And 2, 4, 6, 7. So hopefully... When I go to try to use my circle tool, it will come out and look like a circle. So let's go find out. Uh, and that's pretty good. So there we have it. Okay, one last problem I wanted to add. If you feel good about what I've covered, then you can stop. But one of the other problems that you have for homework, which we did similar to what I just did, I wanted you to know how to handle it when um, you have a number on your x on your squared term for when you have to complete the square, and a number other than 1. So when you look at this, again, x squared, both variables are squared. If both variables are not squared, you have a parabola. Both variables are squared. They're both positive, so I'm at a circle or an ellipse. And now the number, the coefficients, the numbers in front of them are different, so that means I have an ellipse. So I know I'm going to have an ellipse when I do this identify each conic section so we've done that and now I'm going to go complete the square so I want to go through that process so I have three that I have to factor out when I complete the square so that's going to give me x squared plus you have to take a three out of here which leaves you with 2x plus blank plus y squared minus 6y plus blank equals negative 3 plus blank and plus blank. And when you start that, this blank right here, which comes from here, is really a number inside parentheses in which everything has been multiplied by 3. So this right here, I'm just putting out front, and that will help you keep things straight. So what goes here, half of 2 is 1 squared, which becomes 1. 
half of 6 is 3 squared, which becomes 9. And now I'm going to factor. So I have my 3, and that's going to be x uh, plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9. Now, to get it in that standard form, remember, I need to divide everything by 9 because I want it to equal 1. So I'm dividing by 9, and that's going to give me x plus 1 squared over 3 plus y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So they wanted the equation in standard form. There it is in standard form. I have an ellipse, so I identified it. I wrote it in standard form. For an ellipse, give the center and the foci. Okay, so my center is opposite of what it looks like. So negative 1, 3, and x. The number with the x is going to be your x coordinate. And I'm going to have to give the foci. Did they ever ask me to sketch it? Oh, they do have to sketch it. So, all right, so I'm going to go sketch it real quick here. And this is going to be a rough sketch. All right, so my center is at negative 1, negative th oh, no, positive 3. So 1, 2, 3. There's my center. And how far am I going to go left and right is the square root of that number. So the square root of 3 is about 1.7. So that's right before 2. And 1, 2, so that one's going to go here. And how far do I go up and down is 3. So this is 3 this way. 1, 2, 3, that way. So this is my really rough sketch of a bad looking ellipse. Okay, but what's important about that and what you need to remember, so where are my foci? Are my foci on this axis or that axis? Well, I hope you said that it was on this one because in an ellipse, A is always larger. And so A is under the Y, and that's going to be the axis that are going to have your foci. So your foci are going to be somewhere here, and I'm not exact with this. I'm just putting it so that I know it's going to be on that vertical axis. Now, how am I going to find that? Um, I have to remember my equation. I'm trying to figure out where to write it. Let's go over here. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So C squared equals A squared is always the larger number in an ellipse a squared minus b squared, so c squared equals 6, and c equals plus or minus the square root of 6. So that is this distance here, and so what you need to think to yourself is, when you do this, when I go up and down, which number is changing? And I hope you said the y. So that means it's negative 1, and then 3, plus or minus the square root of 6. And that's all that you have to do to answer that question, because it didn't ask you to plot it, so you don't have to go get me the decimal. So, I hope that helps. Simplify things, completing the square, especially when you have a coefficient on your squared term. If you have any questions, come see me or email me. Thank you very much.